Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 17th of September 2011. Once again, we have a C of C flares, but no M flares or X flares. But before we get to that, our trivia question. 35 years ago today, NASA rolled out the first space shuttle. So the question is, what was the name of that shuttle? And what shortcomings did it have that such that it was unable to fly in space? The answer will be given at the end. Well, since yesterday we've had something like about 20 C flares. But it's a little difficult to identify a C flare when the background is very close to the C level. That means a small B flare becomes a C flare by definition. However, more perplexing is why we've not had any major flares out of these regions. So let's take a look at the sunspot regions and see if we can see why. We have 10 officially numbered regions on the disk at the moment. Overnight we lost region 1294. However, the unnumbered region that I was touting yesterday was officially numbered region 1299. We do have one new region emerging in the northwest, just behind region 1289. So I assume that that will become region 1300 by tomorrow. Let's take a look at the individual regions in detail, starting with region 1289 in the northwest. This region has produced just one sea flare. This has shown some minor growth overnight. However, I think the fascinating thing about this is the shape of this huge leading spot. It almost looks as though there is one spot half surrounding another. One could do Rorschach tests with this particular shape. It's plain weird. While we're in the northwest, let's take a look at region 1291. But unfortunately, it's too close for them to really tell what's going on there. So let's move on to region 1293. That region seems to have lost a lot of area overnight. However, some of that might be foreshortening, but it does seem to have decayed. Next, let's take a look at regions 1290 and 1297 on the southwest limb. Between them, they've produced 11 C flares in the last 24 hours. However, region 1297 has rotated right to the very limb and will be gone by tomorrow. 1290 is still just visible, but it's hard to see what trend is happening as far as its area is concerned. But one could safely assume that, having produced so many flares, that there's probably some growth going on there. Region 1292 is near disk center and seems to have decayed significantly overnight, and I suspect it will be gone by tomorrow or the next day. In the northeast, we have the complex of 1295, 1296, and 1298. Region 1295 seems to have undergone quite significant growth in the last 24 hours and has produced a single sea flare. Region 1296, just behind it to the northeast, has produced two sea flares. Although its area hasn't changed very much, the trailer spot seems to be breaking up. Is now three small spots in the one penumbra rather than two large ones. According to NOAA, Region 1298 has grown in area over the last uh, 24 hours. However, if you compare the two pictures, it looks to me as though there are fewer sunspots and which ones there are are much smaller than yesterday. The newly numbered region, 1299, is in the southeast at the present. It's obviously grown since yesterday and is worth keeping an eye on lest it develop into a major region. I've already mentioned the new region growing up in the northwest. So we seem to have a very high X-ray background because we have so many different active regions. And we're not getting major flares out of them because they're all growing relatively slowly or decaying. So that, but that can change in a heartbeat, so stay tuned. So let's see if we can pull all this together by looking at the evolution of these regions using the Sunspot movie and the Magnetic movie from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. And I think the interesting one here is the uh, new region popping up in the northwest. And it's probably most clearly seen in the magnetogram right towards the end of the sequence. In the transition region movie from the AIA instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory, you can see very little in the way of ma major eruptions on the disk, so we would expect there to be very few coronal mass ejections. In the low temperature coronal movie, I think the area of interest here is again the northeast limb, where these new regions are coming over. You can see the same effect in the high temperature X-ray image from the SXI instrument on GOES. In the northeast there is a spectacularly bright region still behind the limb. In the SOHO coronagraph data, indeed there are very few coronal mass ejections. However, there does seem to be something developing off the southwest limb right towards the end of the sequence. In the larger field of view instruments you can see Venus just exiting from the northeast quadrant of the image. In the solar wind data, you can see that we have been hit by a coronal mass ejection. The speed of the solar wind suddenly jumped about six hours ago, uh, in conjunction with an increase in the temperature and the density. Also, if you look at VZ, which is the red plot at the top of the picture, you can see, first of all, it goes north and then suddenly changes south. And this is, again, a typical signature of a coronal mass ejection passing by us. The high energy electron flux 
has been at high levels for the last couple of days, but then took a sudden plummet when this uh, front passed through. And in the last 24 hours we've had no proton events. The auroral zone, as seen by the NOAA satellites, has become much more uh, active than it was yesterday. And the KP index has increased, although it has not got to unsettled levels as yet. So in summary then, the X-ray background is still at the B8 level. The sunspot number has risen to 173. The radio sun intensity is at 143. Solar wind speed has increased slightly to 460 kilometers per second with a density of about with a density of about two protons per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are still considered quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares and M flares are likely. We still have a possibility of an X flare. The sunspot number will remain high. Coronal mass ejections are likely. Solar wind speed will go slightly higher, and a geomagnetic storm is still possible. The composite coronal picture shows us that the new region coming over the northeast limb should start to be visible tomorrow. The answer to our trivia question is the first space shuttle was called Enterprise. And the reason why it couldn't be used for going into space is that it was built with no engines and didn't have a functioning heat shield. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.